Hey guys, I'm Combat Craig, and today we're talking about the difference between fully proving your symptoms and just saying they're related. The two terms are often used interchangeably, but there's a big difference between fully proving your symptoms and just saying they're related. When you fully prove your symptoms, you back them up with evidence that shows a clear connection between the two. On the other hand, simply saying that your symptoms are related doesn't necessarily mean that there's a clear connection between the two. For example, let's say you have a headache and you say it's because you're stressed out. To fully prove this, you would need to show how your stress is causing your headache. Maybe you could point to a specific incident shortly before your headache started, or maybe you could show how your headaches tend to get worse when you're under a lot of stress. On the other hand, if you just say your headache is related to your stress without providing any evidence, then it's more likely that you're just making a guess. In order to fully prove your symptoms, it's important to back them up with evidence. Otherwise, you're just saying they're related without actually showing how they're related and how they're connected. Having your doctor fill out a disability benefits questionnaire is the easiest way to get your symptoms down on paper so you have your symptoms on the same paperwork that's going to be used by the VA rater. Disability benefits questionnaires consist of a series of checkboxes, and these checkboxes um, correlate to the rating criteria for the disability you're filing a claim for. By filling out this questionnaire, you're able to get more money when you're rated higher. You're going to be able to get rated higher because you're more accurate about your symptoms, and it's literally checkboxes. On the other hand, if you do not submit this information before you file your claim, your fate's pretty much in the hands of a CNP examiner who works for the VA, the enemy, to determine your rating, and most of the time, you're going to receive a lowball rating. This guy's a CNP examiner hired by the VA. He's going to do whatever he wants to do anyway. Either way, whether you get a disability benefits questionnaire filled out by your private doctor or you decide to just take your luck with the VA, either way, the CNP examiner is going to do what he wants to do. But if you provide a disability benefits questionnaire that's filled out by your private physician, you will have contradictory and competing reports about your symptoms. This is a good thing. This means you have a tie on your hands, and when there's a tie, the veteran always wins. Winning VA claims comes down to provable medical evidence. I go in depth at my boot camp, and you can sign up at combatcraig.com. All boot camp members get access to me twice a month via Zoom, so you can look at me face-to-face -face and uh, ask me questions. And then I give you full access to me by providing uh, all boot campers with an email address. My boot camp was designed to demystify the VA claims process, and I know it'll help you out, so I hope to see you on my next live session in boot camp. When you're filling out a disability benefits questionnaire, it's important to be as detailed as possible about your symptoms and how they affect your daily life. Saying that your symptoms are related is not enough. You need to be specific about how they impact you on a day-to-day -day basis. This is basically what a DBQ is all about. You have your diagnosis, you have your nexus, this is the symptoms piece. So you need to get your symptoms down on paper and the VA rater needs to see them. If we're talking about like a mental health claim, uh, the ratings are 0, 10, 30, 50, 70, and 100. If you fill out a uh, DBQ from a private shrink, a uh, psychologist or a psychiatrist, and they check the boxes off that match the 70% criteria, you're making a good argument based on your symptoms and on paper that you deserve a 70% rating. If you forego that process, don't get a private doctor, take your luck with the uh, VA and hope the CNP examiner is going to see it all. That guy could uh, just downplay you like all your VA doctors do. And yeah, veterans fine and seemed a little sad. And then that's how you're going to end up with a 0% rating or a 10% rating or 
Yeah, not even service connected. For example, if you're suffering from fatigue, don't just say that it's related to your disability. Explain how it affects you specifically. Do you have trouble getting out of bed in the morning? Do you need to take naps during the day? Does it make it difficult to concentrate or complete tasks? For me, that's a yes, yes, and a yes. Do you have fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome? Leave a comment below. It's a, it sucks. It is one of the worst disabilities I've ever had, and I've had it for years. But anyway, leave a comment. The more specific you can be, the better. Your disability benefits questionnaire is your opportunity to provide evidence of your disability, so make sure you take advantage of it. This is an opportunity for you. Take this opportunity. I want to take a minute to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Hill & Potten. They're an accredited VA law firm out of Orlando, Florida, and they've been fighting for veterans for over 30 years. If you're considering lawyering up, you might want to head over to hillandpotten.com to see if they can help you out with your appeal or your TDIU claim. Today, I have a medical doctor with me to help explain what you and your doctor need to know about filling out disability benefits questionnaires so they're done properly and accurately so you get the compensation that you earned and you deserve. Let's hop into it. All right. So this is a simulated DBQ on Combat Craig uh, performed today right before the interview. Uh, and so it just puts name, social, date of the exam, asks you. Uh, so if this is like a private DBQ, that's, th that's what I'm going to say. This is a private DBQ like I do. Yep. And then, uh, so it would be at the request of the veteran. Uh, I'm not a VA healthcare provider. I don't regularly see my clients in my clinic. If you are getting a private DBQ from your, say your primary care provider or like your orthopedic surgeon or something then you would definitely want them to click yes or mark an X or whatever if they do it in hand by handwriting uh, because the VA likes that. The Raiders like that. They'll, they'll give more weight to the DBQ. This is one that you have to be examined in person. Somebody has to lay hands on your knee. Uh, I put a little blurb in there. It says, if no, put something in here. I go ahead and put something just to emphasize that it was done in person. Okay, so now we move into the records review. If you mark no record, if the doctor marks no records reviewed, bad, bad, bad. They need to put something here, okay? So that means you need to give them something to review, which might just be their own records. That's fine. They just have to review something. Okay, so, because not everybody has a copy of their C file, and if you take a thousand page C file to your orthopedic surgeon, they're not going to review it. 1A, it says, list the claim conditions that pertain to this questionnaire. So the, just something has to go here. It could just be knee condition. It doesn't have to be like the exact diagnosis. Uh, yeah. This is just to kind of correlate what the veteran said with what the doctor is saying. Because the veteran might claim knee pain, okay? But the doctor actually, generally speaking, will give a much more specific diagnosis than knee pain. Now, you can get compensated for knee pain under yes. some uh, court case uh, that uh, said that. And uh, I generally don't rely on that. I actually like to give a diagnosis, even if it's just knee strain, that seems to go smoother through the VA system. So in, in case you don't know it, the VA doesn't like to follow its own rules. So even hey, court cases. Yeah, the knee condition part is a good because, you know, yeah. um, as I'm writing my personal statement, you should write as a veteran, you should write a personal yes. statement because that's your chance to speak yes. up for yourself on paper. But you don't want to yeah. get too medical and you definitely don't want to be throwing medical words and diagnostic codes around. So, yeah, yeah right knee yeah. pain would be appropriate. So you're kind of picking that up. Right. Building on that. Yeah. Let the yeah, let the doctor say the doctor words. Yeah. Yep. I agree yep. with that. OK. Uh, so like at the at the top there, listen, knee strain. So for somebody who like doesn't have imaging or whatever, you know, then I might I might label them with knee strain. And there's lots of uh, things we talked about, ligaments and tears and cruciate ligaments and all that stuff. All right. And then scrolling down what I diagnosed uh, combat Craig with uh, today simulated was knee joint osteoarthritis, which is, I showed you all those pictures at the beginning, that was osteoarthritis, as opposed to like rheumatoid arthritis or gout. There's other, there's many kinds of arthritis. Osteoarthritis is like your standard run of the mill degenerative arthritis. 
Okay, so he has it in both knees. There's an ICD code for that. That's not super important. The date of diagnosis is important because you want it to match up. Like if direct ser service connection, you want it to be during your service. Uh, secondary service connection, you just want it to be after the primary condition. Uh, and like in and then, this example, if I was doing, uh, if I was already service connected for my right in 2010, and then yeah. I started having issues in my left, uh, it would yeah. make the most sense to have the diagnosis of of that code right. afterwards. If I was doing a secondary, right. for example. Yes, okay. yes. You you caught on to what I was putting down here. Yes. Sir. Uh, and so so left came after right, and then instability developed in both knees at about the same time later on. That That's frequently what I see. Okay, uh, okay so let's keep scrolling down. And so there's all kinds of possible diagnoses in the knees wow. that they give. Yeah, just all, all, some of that's kind of weird stuff that's rare, but they put it on the DBQ, which is fine. And then if you're a, you know, a zebra or a unicorn even, and you have a weird disease that isn't listed on the DBQ, there's space for your doctor to put that there. In the okay? other category there? Yeah, in the other category. It could be anything, anything. Like you have tuberculosis of your knee bones, you know, something like that. Okay, so medical history. See, you had a vision and you knew what I was going to write, that the veteran uh, injured the right knee on active duty in 2010. That became arthritis. That changed the way the veteran walked. That led to a problem in the left knee. And now they both have problems, including instability extension problems, flexion problems. Okay. Yeah. So this, as you can see, it's a small block, right? Yes. So, um, you know, something has to be here. It does not, well, it can't even be very long. So, you know, basically what I put here is like an appropriate thing for history on CNP exams. You'll see them go into great detail. I don't know why, because really that detail about the history really belongs in the nexus letter, you know, about how these different things are related. I personally, I think the CMP examiners spend a whole lot of time going at the records and coming up with some sort of history and avoid actually doing the exam correctly. I don't understand that behavior. I have no explanation for it. So, um, uh, it, this this is kind of like this DBQ is to assess the current status of the disability in the knees, why they go into great detail in the history beyond me. Okay. So to be, uh, I put these, the next three things, I put them in parentheses because they're supposed to be in the veterans description. So basically the veterans own words in my day-to-day -day practice of doing this, I kind of put, you know, kind of help the veteran say what they need to say here. So, but I put it in quotes. Uh, so flare ups, you know, uh, so flare ups, repeated use over time and instability. Uh, well, the instability is kind of specific to the knees, but the other two, the flare ups and the repeated use over time, those are uh, things that are on all of the musculoskeletal DBQs. Okay. So mm -hmm. these are basically required things that the VA has to evaluate you for, whether they can't, basically the principle here, they can't just evaluate you on your best day. Can't tell you how many veterans I've talked to who go in for their CMP exam and they're like, well, I went in on my, on a really good day. So now I'm screwed. Well, no, they're supposed to evaluate you on how you are, you know, even on your worst day, you know, even if that day doesn't happen to be the CMP exam day. Okay. Does that yep. make sense? And, and, and it's important to, uh, there's a lot of important things in the CNP exam, but yeah, if you're having a good day, yeah. uh, you want to talk about the last month or two months, yeah. or whatever's really yeah. going on. Right. And uh, right. it's not right. even so much de-emphasizing the good day. It's telling them what's going on because that's what they're right. to right. evaluate. Because right. yeah. everybody has yeah. good and bad pain days yes. or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, oh, and then just to emphasize, I didn't say, I should have said this at the beginning, is that this DBQ that we're looking at is one of the new DBQs uh, when they were all re-released into the wild. Yeah, yeah there so, it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. Updated on the 20th, released yeah. on March 2021. 20, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So next block is 2D. And it asks if the veteran has a history of instability. So basically, is the veteran reporting instability? This is new on this DBQ. This wasn't on the last iteration. And so I think this is great because this is basically forcing 
the examiner, you know, mostly the CMP examiner, to actually ask the veteran, hey, does your knee give out? And before, I, I can't tell you how many veterans, they're like, yeah, the CMP examiner never even asked me if I have instability in my knees, and they have horrible instability. Right. So, um, okay, so uh, so we just come up with a statement to put in there. And then, so it's good to put, like, which knee is happening, that it gives out, and, and then the, that you stumble, and then how often that happens, okay, yep. every day. Once a week, two times a week, once a month, because that gives that gives the rater some inform some kind of concrete information to give you the rating. Okay, uh, for the two block two E uh, for the effusion, I generally don't pay like you would think that it's like in this set of blocks of important stuff that this would be important. In my opinion, this is not important, so I don't pay much attention to it. It's certainly not in the rating schedule, which we just reviewed. So uh, unless somebody actually has effusions, I, I put no. So um, effusions are basically like really bad swelling of the knees, okay? So basically you get fluid like in that internal capsule of the knee, and, it, and it's just as opposed to swelling like around the outside of the knee. It's kind of a subtle difference. Uh, so moving on to the meat. This is the meat of the DBQ, the range of motion, okay, and functional limitation. So they give a whole like three, you know, paragraphs of direction here. And uh, I'm not going to read that. I'm just going to go through it. And uh, but, you know, this section, this um, this whole section, which goes on for three or four or five pages is, um you know, really what they're rating you on, you know, kind of the range of motion and it, um, the new DBQs, I, I have to be honest. I'm a little bit impressed with whoever put this together because they did a good job. It's actually compliant with a court case called Correa. Now, I'm not impressed with how long it took them to do this because Correa was decided by Kavik in 2016. So it took the VA five years to implement that court case. Not impressed with that part, impressed with how they eventually did it. Okay, now, you would think that they would put the right knee on the right side of the page <laughs> and the left knee on the left side of the page. They didn't. Okay, so I think that's pretty funny. Okay, so basically initial range of motion, you just have to mark abnormal or normal. Combat Craig's knees are messed up on both sides, so they're both abnormal. And then uh, one of the interesting things about these new DBQs is on the old ones, a lot of times you'd see the CMP examiners mark, you know, can't test or not indicated or I don't want to do it or you know whatever. Right. And and now they have to explain why, you know, they have to give a lot. If they're being bad examiners, they have to explain why they're being a bad examiner. I, so. I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy. Yeah, I hate my job. Yeah, they had to go. They got to put something. They got to put yep. something. Interesting. Uh, and then, so this thing about if range of motion is outside of normal, but is normal for this veteran, this is kind of rare. Uh, so <laughs> what they talk about is like age, body habitus, neurologic disease. So this is so body habitus means being obese. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, is what they're talking about. Uh, so it's basically something outside the knee that's limiting the knee. This is kind of rare. Normally, there's not going to be anything in here. Okay. So uh, if abnormal, does the range of motion itself contribute to a functional loss? Well, duh. Yeah. I mean, so what I put is an obvious statement that loss of range of motion limits the ability to function normally. I made that up. Something needs to go in there. Okay. Because it says, if yes, please explain. So I just give a limited explanation. So that that's an important thing on these DBQs is that if you're doing a private DBQ that, that you're paying for, okay, you want to make sure the damn thing is complete, okay? Yep. Because you don't want it to get it rejected for being insufficient, okay? Yep. So they got to they got to answer all the questions that need to be answered. All right, this is a lot of information. I'm going to break this down into multiple videos. So when I post the next video, the continuation of this, uh, it'll pop up here on the screen. Check out my boot camp if you want to get a hold of me and get into the details and get into the weeds. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be part two of this video.